Did you all know that white women owned slaves? And did you know that owning the slaves were their main source to build prosperity and wealth for themselves? And did you know that white women made sure that they owned the slaves and that their husbands didn't get to own the slaves by using legal means? You have to read this book called They Were Her Property by Stephanie Jones Rogers. She's a historian and an associate professor at UC Berkeley. And she uses documents, primary sources, first-hand accounts from slaves telling their stories, and bill of sale from the enslaved people that was bought and sold by white women. Did you know that 40% of the bill of sale in South Carolina in the 18th century either included a female buyer or a seller? You know, we're taught in American culture and in schools that it was mostly the men that did all these evil doings of slavery and upholding white suprem supremacy, but that's not true. White women were just as involved. And to gaslight the public and in reverse, to live in denial as a white woman, as a white person of the actual history as it happened, I don't think is healthy for anybody. So yo, white women were in the slave houses buying slaves. They were the ones managing slaves and making sure that they did their jobs and they were being as productive as they can make them be because they were property. They were property. Mistress had just as much power and mistress could be just as evil and spiteful. So white women's role were in management and disciplining. So they would manage the slaves and discipline the slaves. And here is another story which I found um, sh kind of shocking. Henrietta King was an eight or nine year old girl and she was emptying her mistress's chamber pot every night and there was a piece of candy um, that the mistress put there on purpose to test her. And she knew that so she didn't touch it for days but it was there for days. So finally she caved in and she ate the candy. And, um, and the mistress was known to starve her slaves so she wasn't feeding them all so she was starving also on top of it so she ate this candy and um, when the mistress asked her hey did you eat the candy she said no but the mistress obviously knew that she did it and then she um, um, basically was whipping her she no she was whipping her and because she wouldn't sit still while she was getting whipped what she did was she pinned her head under a rocking chair while she was rocking back and forth on her head and had her daughter whip Henrietta, uh, Henrietta King for like an hour. So uh, because of that, what happened was her jaw broke and she crushed the bones on her left side of her jaw. And after, after that incident, Henrietta King could not open her mouth and her jaw would keep, uh, her whole like jaw would slide to the right. So after that, she could not eat solid foods anymore and um, she could only eat liquids. I'm going to read you this review from the Washington Post by Elizabeth R. Barron. Um, this is just the last paragraph of her review of this book. And it says here, They Were Her Property tells a story of white women's power and their complicity. Southern households were not monolithically patriarchal. Jones Rogers contends, highlighting the grim, savvy, and self-assertion white women showed in acting as petitioners, litigants, and entrepreneurs in pursuit of profit and property. Having demonstrated white women's immense economic state in the continued enslavement of African Americans, Joan Rogers concludes her study by showing the lengths women went into in order to preserve slavery during Civil War. They sought the capture of fugitive slaves who ran towards freedom behind Union lines, moved the enslaved away from the encroaching federal army, or held them in local jails or hid them in their homes to prevent their flight, and withheld the news of emancipation from them to prolong their captivity. And then it goes on to say that they didn't want to compensate the, the slaves with you know proper compensation money and went to try to recreate the, the conditions of slavery. And then they moved on to being authors and writing memoirs 
but they would in these memoirs they would not talk about anything bad so they kind of whitewashed everything so they showed no brutality no privation no agony no loss no tears no sweat and no blood so they made it all pretty they made slavery all pretty and also in the book she talks about how uh, even parents uh, made sure that the, their daughters once they got married that they would ha have their slaves as asset so they would uh, build these trusts where their husbands couldn't touch it so sometimes you would have poor husbands and rich wives and the term mistress now I think has more of a softer uh, connotation than master but back then the the term mistress was not anything um, less powerful than master so there's a lot of first-hand accounts from straight from the slaves talking about their experience with their mistresses in this book which is really fascinating so female mistresses were not any nicer than male masters and here's another account of a landscape architect, a white man who was hanging out with a 12-year-old girl who was acting like a, a girl, a young girl, innocent and cute. And um, they were out in public and she saw this black man out of public that she didn't even know who he is, but just a black man out in public. And she felt it was her place to tell this black man to go back to his plantation, otherwise she would get him whipped. And then as soon as she asserted her power, she went back to being a cute girl to this white man. So there's a lot of accounts from slaves and personal stories like this in this book. And I highly recommend it that you should check it out. And the best way, and I'm a mom, I'm busy all the time, so I don't have time to read, is through Audible. I have my link here and I do get a commission um, if you do use my link to um, get this Audible or this book. But this is a must to learn the history, the accurate history of what really happened back in the slavery days and not ones that are whitewashed.